And today on Voices of Liberation, we have a special episode. As you can see, we are at Ledbetter Beach in Santa Barbara. And this episode is going to be featuring my friend, Chris Raglin, founder of the Sea League. Tell me a little bit about it. So the Sea League is, it's Little League for ocean sports. It's like AYSO for ocean sports. So trying to make the ocean more accessible to people that otherwise haven't had an opportunity to get in, might be afraid, might not have the representation, kind of feel comfortable to get in in that way. So we're here to, to do a little surf lesson. I'm excited. We are. I'm excited <laughs> a bit. I'm excited though that I'm doing this for the first time. Chris works with a lot of youth in the community and so my daughter's here to join me and yeah enjoy enjoy this content because y'all probably will never see me get in the ocean <laughs> again. Um, but I'm excited to do this first time with my daughter and appreciate you. Many thanks to you Chris for bringing us into your world and I'm excited to learn from you today. episode of Voices of Liberation. As you can see, my silk press is done and <laughs> we had so much fun out there in the water. I'm so glad I conquered my fear and make sure that you reach out to Chris Raglan and look into the Sea League and get your kids out here in the water learning about ocean safety. Until next time, we're out. Hello to you both. Welcome to the table, Chris. I know we filmed surfing earlier, Kimiko. So sad and bummed that you missed out on that, but happy that you were able to join us for this conversation. So you want to introduce yourself for the audience and tell, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do? Would love to, thank you. I'm very excited to be joining y'all. Wish I could have surfed with you. Sounded like a blast, but next time. Um, yeah, my name is Kimiko, Kimiko Lorraine Russell Halterman. I'm a surfer, I'm a water person, and similar to Chris, I, I work for an organization called Brown Girl Surf. And we're just a, we're a joyful community that comes together to go to the ocean for healing, to play, to connect with one another. Um, it's a very important place for us and to be able to share that and like have a community to come together with. So excited to know y'all here as well. Um, I'm in Santa Barbara right now for grad school. I care deeply about outdoor education, about opportunities to connect outside um, for the youth especially. So very thankful to be here. Thank you. Thank you both. I'm excited. So you you mentioned Brown Girl Surf, and we'll get to that in a second. But let's talk about Chris, the Sea League. Um, and first, let's touch base on like, why was it important to like get me out there surfing? And what do you do with that aspect of the Sea League? Well, I think it's easier to work with kids than it is to work with adults because you have, <laughs> right, Straight right? Up. You have less, no, you were amazing. You were on it, that you, 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 you were brave. I told you that. I told you, you showed up and you're ready to do it. But I think adults, especially adults that don't have backgrounds of being in the water, swimming and no experience with that, you're gonna be more nervous and being more nervous makes you worse at it. So um, it, I think it's important to just get kids to build relationships with kids as soon as possible with the ocean. That way they care about it. You know, that way they build that, that love and respect for it. Um, and then that's just what they do. You know, that's where they go to play. That's where they go to, to that's where their community is. So, and I'm, I'm sure you can relate, like having, experiencing, creating those experiences with kids. It's, an ex, it's a peak experience, like you're sharing that. So now you're really close with those people that you did that with, like that we did that today. Now we're like this. I know. Because I saw you scared, you know? And then you walked out like, let's do it again. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I see that there's a lot of healing and growth in, and like sharing that time. Yeah. And being out there with somebody you trust, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. probably if I was out there with a random surf instructor that I hired, I would have been tense the whole time. Yeah. But like, I know you, you kept telling me to trust you, to breathe, like the way you were connecting with me when we were out there. It made me, because you said, you know, you that I wasn't, or I think you said like something, I wasn't scared. Like I was scared of shit, even when we were in the water, all that fucking seaweed was swimming up on me. And I was like, bro, better not touch me. We gonna yeah, fight, you yeah, know? So yeah. I, I, I was terrified. <laughs> 
I was terrified, especially them long ones that was coming up in the waves. I'm like, that yeah. could probably choke me out or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, my mind scenario. goes, yeah. you know. Yeah. But being out there with you, knowing like you got me, you know, you're not gonna let nothing happen to me. Put that 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 was important, which I'm sure, you know, over time you develop that relationship with the kids. Um, so on that same note, like with Brown Girl Surf, like. You, I know you didn't start it, but like, what got you into it, and like, why is it important to like for people to engage with? Yes. Okay. This, the idea of trust in all of this, I think, is like so, so, so important. And it, to where Brown Girl Surf originated from, it was two women of color who were surfers in the Bay Area, who would paddle out into the ocean and not see themselves represented. And that's really hard. Like you said, there's already so much going on when you're learning how to surf. And it's, it's hard not to see yourself represented. So they came together and founded this. It's an organization, but it's a community. And it's like this idea of comfort and trust. Um, we say we, we have surfers who are age 9 to 99, which means just like whoever wants to get in the ocean. But I think it is true, like especially for youth, to feel safe, to feel seen, trusted and represented makes all the difference when you're trying something new. It's like, it's very powerful to see how they support one another and, and a community that's able to like provide that trust. Cause like right now, you know, if you go in a lineup, there's gonna be a bunch of white dudes and that's just what it is now. But for me, like growing up to speak to this trust, like you think are people being acting a certain way because I'm black? because I look like this, like they think I don't belong here. Really the culture is just people are mean, you know, people aren't kind to each other and people aren't welcoming. So, yeah, so organizations like Brown Girls Surf, like what the Sea League is, is we're trying to cultivate this thing where kids can learn how to share that space and share the activity and not keep this, this toxic cycle of this really beautiful, like fun thing, you know, even you. You walked out like, I want to do this again because it feels good. Yeah. But it is weird how something that like should bring you joy actually brings you anxiety and discomfort when you're in the lineup around other people. So I think we're just trying Even, to like yeah. we, we've been talking about this recently because it's like both of those things can be contagious. Like mm -hmm. if you're out in the ocean and everyone's like, this is my wave, like yeah. I don't want anyone else on it. That's a contagious yeah. feeling. And then if you paddle out with a bunch of students who are joyful, who are laughing, who are singing Moana in the ocean while they're learning how to surf, that is also contagious. And I think we at Brown Girl Surf, and I think Chris too, like we talk a lot about culture creation, like what California calls surf culture is, is a, a little blip in the time scale of like how long surfing has been yeah. a very like sacred practice. And so we have the power to like create that culture, to bring joy yeah. and play and love. Yeah. And like surfing is such a beautiful way to tap into all of that. And I think that's what black people just do in general. Mm -hmm. If I think about how yes. we, yeah. it, like our, our events, um, the way we share space is ancestral and spiritual and communal. And like, let's just say it, black people have the best time. Like when you go to some black shit, yeah. you not gonna not have fun. Yeah. Like it's just a part of our being yeah. and y'all are just bringing it out into the ocean. Like black people carry this like spiritual joy about them that is, it, it can't be replicated by other cultures. And honestly, I think that's why, you know, especially specifically in America, like we're hated so much because of all the joy just Why you that, a good time. right yeah. our natural beings yeah. like black yeah. people are gonna yeah. triumph and and sing and dance no matter what we're going through yes. right yeah. and i know some people hate that like dang they're system uh systemically oppressed but look at them out there having a good time having a good time in the water all. and it's like yes. yeah we're gonna do that um well that sort of leads me into my next question of how, let's start with the ceiling, then we'll go to Brown Girl Surf. Um, how do parents get their children to experience this joy? How would one go about, like, I have children, right? Yeah. How do I sign them up for the ceiling? How do I get in touch with you? What's the process? Yeah, right. So right now, up until, up until this moment, it's been word of mouth. You know, it's been a lot of, you know, the black community in Santa Barbara is small. 
So you tap in and gain the trust of one family, you really gain the trust of a lot. And I think that speaks volumes to how this is being built, you know. Uh, but in this next season, in this winter season, um, just using the website, the thecleague.org, and it's been a sign up, you know, you sign up as a, it's not a newsletter, but you basically, it's like get on the list to find out when this first season starts. Um, and it's good. We've got like 40 something families that are interested in, in having their kids sign up. And if they do, bet. And if they don't, you know, um, bet. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really like I'm just offering it as like this is happening either way. You know, I'm not the amount of obviously I want a, a big impact, but I want I want to create a, the right experience. And I don't want to make mistakes um, just because I'm trying to get more kids to register. Mm. So, you know, quality over quantity for sure. So I'm gonna get my ocean regardless. <laughs> and he ain't lying, y'all. Yeah. We went we went surfing and I was done after two waves because I was tired. It's <laughs> it's a physical activity, it's yeah. a workout. Yeah. And I'm like lagging, getting because my daughter was there with me, my basically my whole family, and we're like coming up the hill all sandy. He's running back, <laughs> like just <laughs> so <laughs> like Whoosh, 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 one arm, two arm, three arm. And now I'm like, where is he going? Like, why are you running like that? But then I'm like, okay, he's probably getting his surfboard. I was like, hey, I'm like, hey Chris, you going to get your surfboard? No, I'm going back out there. And I was like, you wildin', bro. It's like an appetite. It's like an appetite. You know, you get that, you know, ah, I want it. You know, it's palpable, yeah. But that's beautiful. Like, like I told you when I got there, like the reason why, it's back to that trust thing. The reason why I got out there so confidently um, and just did it was because just seeing your passion for the water and how much you love it. So it's like, yeah. it's almost like people buy into that, right? I sign up to see something. That's why it's so important to do what we love, right? And do something that's authentic to ourselves. Yeah. Um, but with Brown Girl Surf, what is, how do people tap into that? Is this like a national? Brown Girl yeah. Surf itself is based in the Bay Area. Okay. so. We run programs out of Oakland, um, which is so dope. That's where I grew up, grew up, and so it it just feels so good to be coming from this city that is so close to the ocean. And when I was growing up, I would not have thought to go surfing. So it's super. I'm digressing. It's super uh, powerful, I think, to be based in Oakland. That's like where the roots of our organization are. Um, similarly, we got a website. People sign up on Eventbrite. We do, we are also intentional about our like program sizes. Um, and we have uh, like uh, different types of programs. So we've got, we call it Water Warrior Wednesdays. And that's like generally like adults will come. And if it's like their first time trying it out, we'll go to Alameda Beach where there's no waves. We like see how it feels to put on a wetsuit. How does it feel to be with a board in the, in the water? Um, and then on, we'll have surf, Soul Surf for Saturdays, and we'll go out to the ocean near the Bay Area, which is exciting. There's big waves, we're getting in it. Um, and we actually have a program called Rising Leaders, which is so wonderful. It's surfers who've been with us for like several years who wanna like keep growing as surfers, as leaders in the community who are interested in arts, in advocacy, and like tying all that together with their surf experience. Um, we have a really, a really tight crew of rising leaders who are taking that next step in the community. But as for signing up for programs on the website. Yeah. And the website is... Sure. Oh, event, sure. Yeah, so you can go to browngirlsurf.com or org, and then there's an event right link that you can sign up for programs in. That's nice. And I want us to talk about this night dive y'all did. Yeah. <laughs> so for the audience that doesn't know, uh, we, the wonderful food, yeah. lobster, you'll see us feasting yeah. on during this episode, um, is lobster that these two, Kimiko and Chris, went in night dive for. I think it is, I think the, they're out of their minds. Yeah. Um, A lot of people I, do. I would never, but again, I appreciate people that go out and do this because I love to eat me some lobster. Um, but let's let's talk about that. Like what? Because you you said you do this shit all the time, and I, yeah, I'm I'm just love. like why? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> like it's like for fun yeah. almost. Like what what it, what was that like? Like what is that experience like? Like do you just get to the ocean at night and just jump in? Like do you mm. ease in? Like good questions. Yeah. 
<laughs> is it lit up where you're at? And then like, like what? How is? How does that work? It's just dark, dark. Like yeah. it's just full nighttime. <laughs> like we have flashlights. We uh, don't you got like yeah. ocean you street lights. lights. Well, there's this last. So when we got these lobster, it was really foggy. Yeah, and it made it a little spooky. Not gonna play. It's extra exciting. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the visibility wasn't the best. So we're, we're in the water, you know, we've got our flashlight one hand and you grab the lobster with that free hand. So you're pointing and shooting when it's cloudy, it kind of turns into this like ambient light, just like kind of light everywhere. Uh, but it made it a little bit easier to see when things are moving because the light was dispersed a little bit more, you know? Uh, but there was this one street, like we're, we dive right off the 101. Like you can hear the cars where we are. And the train comes by, yeah. that was trippy. Yeah. But yeah, that one light, it got so foggy that this light was kind of keeping us oriented because it was so dark and foggy. I was like, which way is the shore, you know? And then this light actually checked yeah. us back. It was, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. thankful for that light. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, okay, so I'm thinking of like, you go on to, what are those called, piers or docks or whatever? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you go down, no, y'all like start Check from the, the sand. Yeah. Yeah. Man, y'all some in. different kind of people, <laughs> yo. It's, like, it's yeah. very, it's very special. Yeah. I mean, this is, I think Chris hunts more than I do, yeah. but I love snorkeling and, and free diving. And it's like, I think similar to how you're talking about how surfing felt today is like, once you like see down there and you get to be like immersed in this world, like you look at the top of the ocean and it's like pretty, yeah. it's the ocean. And you go under and it's like, so much going on, so much life. So it's pretty dope. And especially at night, it's really, yeah. it's really cool. Colorful. <laughs> Very like, colorful, yeah. pink, great. It's yeah. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I think I would do it if I had a team. So like I need about three, four security guards. <laughs> so like, <laughs> because the, no, but let me, let first. me explain myself why. Because like I got my light, you know, right? I'm yeah. catching, what's it called, lobster with the other hand. Yeah. If, a, if, a little, if a little fish want to check me from the side, mm -hmm. boom, there's my security, like pop, bam, did. I'm it safe, was. you know? <laughs> so like I think well, how I'm envisioning it is I got like two bodyguards here, two bodyguards in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm good, it's creating like this little square around me so I can do my thing and they're yes. like popping the little fish. <laughs> Crystal, we're gonna make this happen. And that's what I'm saying, get I'm me excited. four security, <laughs> that's my thing. You got and two right here, let's go. <laughs> And I think I also need like, do do they make bubbles? <laughs> because when I'm thinking about it, like they might stop a fish here, but then one might sneak up to the side. So if I had like a bubble, at least just from the like waist up like yeah. this, I'm good. Like then I can do it. So that's how I'm envisioning doing that. And I'm sure somewhere, cause you know the way they could go down and see sharks, they're in like these cages. So they gotta have bubbles yeah. for that. You know? I'm, I'm, <laughs> let me know, <laughs> and I'll be the Here guinea pig. I won't try. <laughs> Find me a bubble yeah. and wow. about four bodyguards, and I'm talking like, yeah. I'm talking about like swole. Like they could knock a fish <laughs> out, you know, just like a pop or even like a, no, that's horrible. I should not talk yeah. about squishing fish. That's horrible. <laughs> but like, just maybe like a push, like a push of the fish, you know? Cause I went to uh, Channel Islands and that's where I learned, I was telling Chris about this earlier and see me and I learned that fish are not afraid of people. Yeah. You know, cause I've always had fish tanks. Yeah. I tapped the tank, my fish, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah. But in Simi, those were some bold fish. I mean, I think they were like kissing me, coming right up in my face. And I was like, this is terrible. Like who taught them like yeah, personal space and Rude. boundaries? Like you Sometimes can't just people be. people out there will like feed the fish and they get, they get used to seeing humans and thinking that it's like a dog. Mm. But do you teach kids it? like, how, how does that work too with like the Sea League? And I know you've been sort of like working with Chris, like are you teaching kids also about like fish and seaweed and all the critters down there? And do, do they find stuff sometimes? Or are they like picking stuff up and showing you? And yeah, the younger the kids are, the less afraid of animals they are. Um, I can't make it feel like school. Like, you know, if, if they even smell school, they're out. They're, they're just, they check out, they don't even want to go in. So I have to be slick about it. I have to, um, tide pooling works, you know, just them getting in the water and 
not being like, this is the name of the sin. And, 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 you know, it's just, look at this, like inviting them to be curious. But yeah, the older kids, they, they definitely struggle with, with the animals in there. And that's why it's, yeah, it's so important to get them in. Uh, Kimiko actually works, we used to work for uh, oh, CME. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And it, so the camp? The camp, yeah. Wow. Uh, in, on Catalina Island in Cherry Cove. That's cool. Yeah. I hope they got better because they traumatized. <laughs> They trauma. It got better. It got better. Yeah, they had animals outside where I was sleeping and stuff, and I was like, "Y'all didn't put this in the brochure. Like, yeah. let me know that." Because you wouldn't have showed up if it was. Well, yeah, I was. Well, no, I would have showed up, but it's like I like to be prepared for okay. things. I don't like to be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was, there was things like that, and like. That's where I learned about, what's the state fish, Garibaldi? The Garibaldi. So I yes. learned about that, never forgot it, because those <laughs> things were coming right up to me. Because um, a lot of them are out there. Yeah, I've um, seen a long time. Still, they're still, yeah, still a thing. Um, so yeah, that's, See Me was like my first introduction to the ocean and like being in the water, or even snorkeling, putting on a wetsuit. Like my mom never, we went to the beach, but it wasn't like a lot of, education about what's in the ocean or different fish and I believe you said you're an environmental educator yeah so how how is that like what's that experience like very a lot resonates with what what Chris said and also what you're sharing because I, I think I feel very deeply that like you're not going to grow if you're overwhelmed mm -hmm. like there's this like comfort zone place where like everything's nice and fun yeah. and then you get out of there and you're stretching and you're growing and that is a place where a lot of growth can happen. But if you go past that and it's like uncomfortable to the point that you're like overwhelmed and panicking, that's not where growth happens either. So I think like in terms of environmental ed and in terms of like sharing surfing and ocean sports, like it's really important to be cognizant of like where are, where are you, where am I feeling personally inspired to step into what I'm ready for. Um, and that's true of like, like you were saying with environmental ed and like learning about the seaweeds, learning about the critters, like that curiosity is innate. Like you don't see something crawling on the beach and not care about it, especially when it's the first time you're seeing it. You're a kid, you're playing on the beach. It's like so exciting. So with environmental education with Brown Girl Surf, we like very similarly, it's just like an opportunity to like be curious and like all of these connections with the ocean are meaningful, whether it's riding a wave, whether it's finding slimy kelp on the beach and thinking about how it yeah. helps the ocean and what that kelp does for the ocean. Like, yeah. it's all a meaningful part of, of connecting, I think. That's beautiful. So we're almost pressed for time, but I want people that are watching it to know how, what is the best way that folks can support your work so you both can continue doing that in this community. What do you think? I think sharing stories is really important. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about that in the context of like Brown Girl Surf and just sharing like this exists as a place where people can come to. The Sea League exists. Yeah. Um, and also just thinking about as a woman of color learning how to surf and how valuable stories of other women that I saw myself represented in were. So in the, in the larger work, right? Mm -hmm. of of getting in the ocean and, and connecting. Just keep sharing stories. Mm. Yeah, yeah. we were actually talking about this earlier. And, you know, you don't think of youth rec sports as, as a nonprofit, but Little League, AYSO, all of those things, nonprofits, you know? Like, people are donating their time, their resources, their money. Um, and a really hard thing that we both struggle with is this idea of what we do being charity. You know, as this, like, we're helping people in need but really, th this is a, a need on, on a scale, on, out of the scale of just, you know, just for kids of color, just for low income, whatever, like building the relationship, this relationship with the environment within like in that bigger picture, um, we think will, will solve the problems that we're trying to do with adults or with policies or whatever. So it, it's come at, come at projects like these or programs like these with an open mind and a perspective um, beyond like, oh, I'm just gonna donate my money mm -hmm. or like my wetsuits and be like, wow, you guys are really beyond just a daycare for kids, mm -hmm. you know, like, 
you know, it, it is, there is a bigger mission. It's hard to put that on your website like that. You know, you have to make a mission, you know, have a mission statement and, and be direct with what you're doing. But yeah, it's, it would be good for people to look at it, what we're doing as, as necessary and not um, helping people. Yeah, you know? it's like an intrinsic, yeah. We're all connected to the ocean. No matter where our ancestors are from, yeah. we're all connected to the ocean, so. That's nice. That was meaningful, and I resonate with that so much. And we are almost out of time, and we could talk about this for so much knowledge you both have. Thank you for being a part of Voices of Liberation. I really appreciate it. And I think we should cheers, because this is Black Girl Magic Y from the McBride Sisters. You know, we had to support Black business. Cheers. cheers. Thank you. Thank for I appreciate you both being here. And thank you all for tuning in to Voices of Liberation.